This is Pre-Calculus Concept 30b. We're going to talk about verifying identities. Um, it, at first, these are going to seem like intimidating, difficult problems, but it ends up being that they're really just little puzzles where you have to take a complicated trig expression and make it something much, much simpler using all of the identities that you know. So we'll do a few examples, and we're going to do a lot of these in class, so hopefully it will start to sink in. So here's an example. I have an equation down below, which states that the secant x times the cotangent x equals cosecant x. And so our job is to show that this is in fact true um, using identities that we already know. So the hard part of these problems is knowing how to start. And a good thing to keep in mind is that you just have to try different things. And you will develop strategies over time that work differently in different situations. One of them that's very common is anytime you have trig functions that are other than sine and cosine is to change those into expressions that do have sine and cosine. So for example, we know that secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function, and that's something we can take advantage of. We also know that cotangent is the cosine of x over the sine of x. Okay, and so by using those two identities, I want to see what happens. And basically almost right away you see that the cosines cancel and you end up with 1 over sine of x. So this is a step-by-step -step process and I want to get to the point where I have the left side of the equation equal to the right. And after simplifying you can see that the 1 over sine result is the same thing as cosecant. So in the end I have a simple statement cosecant x equals cosecant x. So remember that strategy, changing things into term of sine and cosine is often a useful way to start these problems. All right, let's look at another example. Um, in this problem, I can't use that last trick because things are already in terms of sine and cosine. I want you to take 10 seconds and um, think about this problem. Are there any algebraic strategies that jump to mind, especially when you look at the left side of the equation? All right, well, hopefully you thought about a few things, and maybe nothing came to mind, but hopefully at least a few of you thought, well, this is an expression that can be factored. So I'm going to factor out a cosine. And when you do that, you are left with the following expression. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I have this statement now. This is a good time to talk about a little side note to the Pythagorean identity that we talked about in the last lesson. So I said that one of the real important identities that you will often encounter is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Um, if I manipulate this a little bit, it should make a lot of sense to you that 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So this kind of side version of the Pythagorean identity actually comes up quite often. So if I take advantage of that in this scenario, I can replace what is in the parentheses with cosine squared. And that is using the Pythagorean identity. Right. Um, keeping going here, I have cosine times cosine squared, which is cosine to the third. And very quickly, you end up with your result. Um, you are done with the problem when you show that the left side and the right side are, in fact, equal. <coughs> Here's a problem we're going to try two different ways. So, uh, oftentimes, there are multiple approaches that both work for the same problem. So some of you might look at this identity and say, well, I want to work with the left side of the equation. I want to change that, make it look different, and make it match the right side. So anytime you have a fraction with a single denominator, um, one algebraic thing that you're allowed to do is to break that fraction up. Um, usually we go in the other direction, right, and we come up with a common denominator. But in this case, I'm actually splitting up my numerator, and uh, now I have two fractions. All right, the fraction on the left is secant theta, and the fraction on the right is tangent theta. And at this point, I'm actually finished because that was what I was trying to show. Right. Now, others of you might have looked at this problem and said, well, 
on the right side of the equation here, I have some non sine and cosine functions, and so I could convert those into sine and cosine. The first one is a reciprocal identity. Let me be consistent. I want to use x, or sorry, theta for this problem. So um, the reciprocal identity is uh, 1 over cosine theta, and tangent is one of my quotient identities. Um, so when I take this approach, I get two fractions that can be added together. And when I do that, I have 1 plus sine in my numerator and cosine in my denominator. And here I'm done because I've shown that this equals the left side of the equation. So a lot of times you have uh, options like that where you can work with one side or the other. And it's kind of the same idea here, but in one situation I'm kind of splitting the fraction up. And then the other one, I'm actually putting the fraction back together. All right, our final example is uh, a harder one. But here I have um, two fractions on the left. And I want to clean them up, simplify them, and see if, in fact, I get 2 secant x on the right. So here's my strategy for this one. Um, I have two fractions, and I'm adding them together. So a lot of times, a common denominator is a good strategy in a scenario like that. So I'm going to copy these, um, give myself a little bit of space in between, and I'm going to think about what a common denominator for these two fractions would be. And hopefully it jumps to mind that multiplying the left term by cosine over cosine is going to help me get to a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by cosine over cosine and if I do a similar thing to the other term, I would want to think about multiplying this by 1 plus sine over 1 plus sine. Okay. Uh, by doing that, I've come up with a expression that has a common denominator. So let's start off with what that common denominator would be. That common denominator would be cosine x times 1 plus sine x. And my numerator would be cosine squared right, plus, and then I have a little problem where I have to FOIL. So I'm going to have 1 plus sine x plus another sine x right, um, plus sine squared. So you can see this is getting pretty complicated. Um, my hope is to show that all of that, when I clean it up, ends up being 2 secant x. Okay, so take five seconds, see if you see anything in the numerator that might be able to be simplified. Okay, hopefully a few of you saw that I have cosine squared plus sine squared. And that is an identity that you should recognize. So those two things together end up being 1. Um, then I have my other 1, and then my two signs I can put together as 2 sine x. Uh, my denominator on the bottom I could multiply out, but it's going to turn out that it's really useful if I don't, and we'll see why in the very next step. So I'm going to just leave this like that. Okay. Um, 1 plus 1 is 2, so I'm going to make that a 2 there. And hopefully you can see that the numerator can now be factored. So we talked about factoring earlier as a trick. And this is a case where factoring is going to help us out a lot. Because now I have 2 times 1 plus sine x in the top. And cosine times 1 plus sine x in the bottom. I'm going to carry the right side down. I'm, I'm hoping all along that the left side will end up equaling secant x. All right, and here you have some canceling happen. I get 2 over cosine, which is equal to 2 secant x. So um, these take quite a bit of practice. Uh, you have to develop some strategies. Each problem's a little different. You have to kind of try and try again. Um, my last slide here is just something from your book. Um, it's got some tips. And uh, I just wanted to point out a few things here that are particularly important to remember. Uh, one of them is the bottom here. Don't be afraid to stop and start over again. Because a lot of times you're going to just run into roadblocks and you got to try something else. Um, this has quite a few of the techniques we talked about. Um, changing things into sine and cosine is a good strategy. Um, 
factoring is a good strategy. Um, sometimes breaking a fraction up is a good strategy. Um, sometimes putting two fractions together is a common strategy. Those, those are four ones, main strategies that come up quite a bit. Good ones to keep in mind.